Hi, it's Rob here again, and uh, as you can tell by the background, it's not. Uh, I'm not in my workshop. I'm in uh, uh, a spare room uh, in our apartment. Um, there's a reason for that, and um, it's because uh, at the moment I'm suffering with back problems, and uh, it's difficult for me to uh, go all the way to my workshop. So uh, I'm uh, taking a shortcut and doing this in the house. <clears throat> uh, I want to give you a bit of an update uh, about what's been happening um, in the uh, recent past, uh, why I've not been making many videos, um, and uh, what, uh, what I'd like to do in the near future. So I suppose the, there are two major events really that uh, uh, have had a major impact uh, in the uh, past year. Um, the one first one is that uh, my mother died uh, some time ago um, in uh, spring of last year and that meant that uh, we were uh, very often uh, at her side um, which is as you can imagine is uh, not in Switzerland but it's in the UK so we were traveling a lot uh, to go and see her and make sure she uh, at least uh, could see us before she passed on. Um, so that's, uh, that was a real uh, blow as you can imagine and um, took a lot of the wind out of our sails. Um, however, the other uh, thing that is, uh, has been happening really since uh, um, all of last year is uh, the fact that uh, uh, my wife and I are building a house, or shall be building a house. <clears throat> in fact, the land purchase should go through any moment now, uh, sometime this month. And then um, we have to finalise the design, uh, request planning permission, uh, or building permission rather, and when they uh, give that, then the builders will start to build it. Um, and uh, this is a project where more or less we can decide every detail of that um, of that project. So uh, as you can imagine, there's a lot to decide and a lot to uh, discuss. Um, and then, of course, uh, things like uh, all the uh, fitments in the bathrooms and all that uh, to and kitchen and so on. All the um, devices, the uh, dishwasher, the uh, cooking hob and all that stuff needs to be decided, chosen and um, checked if it does it fit in the budget and all that. So this is a very, very time intensive um, aspect of a very big project which you can imagine has been distracting us uh, rather a lot from making videos in the workshop. <coughs> Um, I've made some notes here because I'm, uh, <laughs> I've really got a lot to, uh, to, to let you know. <clears throat> um, another factor has been that I'm <laughs> I've got many hobbies and um, that leads to a kind of dilution uh, where I don't have so much time for each one. Um, and um, so one hobby that's been taking my... Uh, what well, has always been a focus for me is uh, car detailing. That's uh, washing your car, making sure that it's uh, nice and shiny, uh, removing scratches, um, making sure that it looks like new, and so on. Uh, my last car was 18, um, and I sold it to my daughter. She's very pleased with it. Um, but the car looked like new because I looked after it. And uh, I've just got a new car. My my first one in 31 years, first new car in 31 years. And uh, my aim, of course, is to uh, do the same with that. So, um, and that all takes time, as you can imagine. Um, so, uh, those, are, those are two of the, the new uh, factors uh, as, as hobbies uh, li listed. Another one is, some of you may have noticed, I'm always often wearing a different watch. And that's because I like to collect watches. I don't have a big collection and they're not very valuable. 
Um, I'm a big fan of Seiko. This is a Seiko. Um, and um, I think they, they offer fantastic value for money and the designs are very good. Uh, not all, but uh, very often you can get really nice designs. So, um, in, a, in a moment of weakness, uh, very often I will buy a new watch. I mean, they're not, not crazy prices. Uh, not like the uh, very selective uh, Swiss ones. <clears throat> but um, I'd like to uh, also just show show my watch collection um, for, uh, for you. Um, then uh, another aspect is that I've just got a new camera. <clears throat> not the one you're being filmed with, or I'm being filmed with right now. Um, but I'll just get it disappear off screen. And um, I will be using this later to uh, improve the visual quality of my videos, I think. They're already not bad. Um, here we are. This is a uh, Sony uh, RX10 Mark IV. Um, it's a camera which uh, does not have an interchangeable lens. You can't change the lens on this. Um, but uh, the advantage of it is that it um, has a fantastic uh, zoom range. And so, uh, once you've turned it on, um, you can go from this, which is 24 millimeters, all the way to 600 millimeters. Um, so you can really zoom in on uh, distant details like birds and trees and whatnot. Um, and uh, I shall be using this more, I think, uh, as a video camera as well as a very accomplished stills camera. So um, uh, watch this space, as they say, and um, we'll, uh, I'll be very interested to uh, start doing that. <coughs> and on that note of uh, improving the quality of, uh, of video, uh, I want to improve also the sound. Here you're using, I'm using the inbuilt microphone of this uh, uh, Sony camcorder which is filming, you, filming me right now. Um, but for example if I had a Lavalier mic or a LAV um, just here pinned to my uh, black t-shirt um, I think the sound would be a lot clearer and there'd be no echo from the room. So uh, that's one another thing I want to look at. <clears throat> and then another thing I want to do is to show you basically what what video equipment or what equipment do I use when I'm doing uh, my various videos. Um, I've had uh, some where I've done uh, I filmed driving in the Alps, for example, uh, or I filmed a, uh, a quick drive on, on a Sunday to work, um, or uh, I've had uh, some outdoor shooting events, for example. And um, for those, I've, I've used a mix of different cameras. Um, they don't cost the earth, uh, but it's useful to have a, a selection of uh, different types of cameras. And now with the uh, the addition of the new Sony, um, this uh, RX10, uh, um, I think uh, we'll see another uh, uh, another degree of flexibility in the in the video uh, filming world or in the my abilities to make videos. <coughs> um, so. That leaves me really to the last two items. Uh, I'd, I'd like to do uh, some gun reviews, some more gun reviews. Um, what I've, uh, I will uh, stop the video or stop filming in a minute, go and get them and uh, show you briefly uh, what they look like. But I recently bought uh, an FN FAL, which has been my all time favourite assault rifle ever since I was a little boy. As a little boy, I used to draw these things, and uh, and now I have one. So um, unfortunately, I haven't shot it, and that would be an opportunity to take you with us 
to, uh, to a shooting range and uh, see how it performs. Um, and the other one that I've uh, just bought, uh, which I've wanted also for ages and ages, is an SKS, the uh, Simonova carbine, the Russian uh, carbine which entered service in 1945 in the uh, Russian army and was su succeeded shortly after by the uh, very well-known Kalashnikov. So, um, uh, if you'll excuse me, I'll uh, disappear now and uh, reappear and show you those briefly. Okay, so I'm back. Uh, ruffled my hair as you can see and um, this is the uh, FNFAL uh, that I was uh, talking about. This is uh, the used to be the uh, called the right arm of the uh, free world and um, it used to be the uh, uh, British service rifle. This is a British model as uh, witnessed by these zigzag marks here on the bolt. <coughs> And um, uh, so I have some ammo for it, uh, and it's really just time finding a moment when we can uh, go down to the range and uh, uh, have some fun. Um, it's in very good condition, as you can see, <clears throat> and uh, I must say that I'm very pleased that I could get uh, one which has been restored at the uh, actual... Um, uh, armory, uh, the um, uh, I can't think of the English. I think it's armory, <clears throat> um, and uh, has, this one has actually never been shot uh, since they replaced. Uh, they gave, gave it a new barrel. <clears throat> so this is uh, one of my new purchases. Uh, really, a very very fine rifle. Um, really looking forward to playing with this one. And then the other one, uh, which I bought recently, I just have to uh, disappear off screen and come back with it. One second. So here I am back again. Um, so I was mentioning the, uh, the other one which I've uh, bought recently, and that's this uh, SKS. And as you can see, it's in absolute mint condition, absolutely beautiful. It's a Russian one. Um, uh, the markings on here, the Tula uh, Armoury, uh, show that it was uh, uh, made in 1950, and also this one has never been shot. Um, it's absolutely uh, spanking new, <clears throat> and uh, I all I had to do was to get uh, lots and lots of cosmoline out of it um, when I was cleaning it. Um, there's a bit of a story behind this one. <clears throat> uh, I bought it at my uh, uh, dealer in uh, Switzerland and he asked me, well, guess where it comes from? And I said, well, it's Russian, so it comes from Russia. And he said, no. He said, um, this one, in fact, he bought, I don't know, maybe 10 or 20 of them, um, comes from South Korea. The, uh, apparently the president wanted a, a presidential guard and as you know the, uh, it's very often used for uh, uh, ceremonial purposes. It's a very nice looking rifle, has this um, uh, beautiful shiny uh, bayonet which um, you can just deploy like that and um, so that will glint in the sun and uh, make a uh, for a very nice ceremonial event <clears throat> and um, uh, so he said the president of South Korea wanted to create a presidential guard but then apparently Parliament said no and uh, so they had to even even though they had bought all of these rifles um, they were uh, obliged to uh, uh, sell them again. So uh, they came on the international market and my dealer here uh, bought, I don't know, 10, 20 of them. So um, I'm not very used to doing this as you can see and this one also has never been shot uh, which I think I mentioned. <clears throat> the incredible thing is it comes with all the, all the little goodies including the 
cleaning kit that uh, fits in here, um, the little ammo pouches that uh, fit on the original uh, sling, and uh, even uh, two, two uh, uh, clips to load the um, to load the uh, magazine with. So uh, there you go. I'm looking forward to showing you those in more detail, um, but it's a question of finding the time uh, and also being healthy enough that uh, my um, I have two slip discs in my back, which is why it's easier for me to sit than it is for to to stand, and um, it also slows me down walking around and stuff. So there we go. So I hope um, uh, this was a uh, a useful. An interesting. Ah, I've forgotten one thing. Um, in order to uh, to house all these rifles, which uh, from time to time it's nice to actually have them on display, um, I've uh, done a little homework project, a home woodwork project, and I've made a uh, rotating rifle rack for twelve rifles. Not that I have twelve, but you never know. <laughs> um, <clears throat> and. Um, so the uh, the rifle rack is more or less complete except it needs the finishing touches it needs to be sanded down it needs to be um, uh, a coat of uh, lacquer uh, or clear lacquer on on the wood so that it uh, brings the wood grain out better and so on and uh, it needs some felt where the where the rifles will touch it needs some felt marking uh, mounting too <clears throat> but apart from that, um, I think it would be a nice little uh, project to have a look at. Um, if you have a look in the internet, there are many uh, similar uh, projects around. I just adapted the uh, the measurements to the um, to, to my spe particular specifications. Um, and um, one thing that's a bit different f for me is I will use uh, magnets. To hold the barrel to the uh, the rifle barrels to the uh, to the stand, um, <clears throat> but otherwise it's a pretty common uh, looking uh, rifle stand. Okay, that's it from me. I hope it was a uh, an interesting and uh, uh, useful look at the things I would like to do. Uh, hopefully, I will get time to do them and um, uh, give you a. a one reason to uh, to stay subscribed. Um, actually, uh, recently I was it was noticed that I'd uh, republished or published the uh, the Ruger project file, and uh, I got almost immediately I got two uh, very kind uh, messages back saying, "Hey, nice to see you back, Rob." So um, thank you very much for that. It's very humbling that uh, people. Um, that I noticed that people uh, have been waiting for some content from me, so I'll do my best to honour that and uh, to bring you some. Thank you very much for watching. Um, all the usual stuff, if you've enjoyed this and would like to see more of the usual stuff, then uh, please subscribe if you haven't already. Um, if you like what you've seen, then press like, you know, and um, I think that's it, isn't it? I'm not very used to doing this anymore. Okay, <laughs> thank you very much for watching. Take care. Bye-bye now.